Kit Victoria here, out of camera range. <laughs> I'm going to show you how I do yarn painting and uh, just how easy it is and playful and fun. And this particular one, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step of doing the rooster. So some of this will be sped up a little bit, but mostly what I'll do is just take you through it step-by-step. So this was my first experiment with doing this rooster and kind of giving a feeling of a barn and some foliage in the background. But this was uh, this yarn. So this is all um, blanket, blanket weight yarn. So that's what you're seeing over here. It's all blanket weight yarn and it's all scraps. It's all scraps that uh, my sister-in-law does a lot of knitting with this kind of yarn. And so she's been giving me her scraps. Well, you don't need very much. I mean, here's a little, you know, a real short piece and there are even shorter pieces. Uh, you probably can make out some of it as like, there's just tiny little pieces for a lot of these features. And if you're doing flowers or whatever you're doing, it's, um, yeah, it's, you don't need a lot of yarn. It takes very little yarn. It's amazing. So anyway, what I have are some really sharp little scissors and, um, it, this is just a skewer. I broke off half of it and it's just my, you know, I have a little bit of a point on it and it's great to push the yarn around and I've got good old Elmer's glue. So here's the process. So first I kind of sketch some out on a scrap piece of paper. Oh, and by the way, this is, uh, this is a, a canvas board. I bought a bunch of these in bulk and they've been great because they're really stiff, which is nice. So first I sketch out my idea and you know, you don't have to be really, you don't necessarily have to transfer this because you can get graphite paper and you, you transfer it onto, da -da -da, onto your surface. And when you're first learning this, you can use very heavyweight paper, but I had a lot of these and now I've practiced for quite a while. So this is really fun. This has been my fun this year project has been doing the yarn painting because my sister-in-law was giving me so much yarn and it, I go, this would be fun. And it is, it's really fun. I highly recommend it. So anyway, you do a little bit of a sketch. You can transfer it with some graphite paper, or once you've figured it out, you can freehand it. So step one, you know, sketch graphite paper, transfer it. Just any old pencil will do to transfer it, and you can also use a pencil on, on here. So once I've done that, now sometimes I do this and sometimes I don't, which is... Sometimes I'll paint it with just some jar acrylics. You know, the student student grade, just fine, and just lightly paint it. And what that does is that when you put the yarn on, every once in a while you might leave a teeny little bit of a gap. And this both does two things, okay? It informs you a sense of what colors you might want to use, but it also creates some kind of a color in case you leave any gaps between your strands of yarn. So there's something back there in case there's a gap. And you you can or can't, It's it doesn't matter. I'm, I've been doing this on some of my compositions. So let's make sure everything is still working. Yes, everything is still working. <laughs> All right, and so there's step one. There's step two, and now I'm going to show you how I do this with this one. All right. And the other thing I keep handy is a little piece of rag. I, I use old t-shirts, and they're great for wiping excess glue off your stick. Having a little stick is really handy. Okay. So what I usually start with is the eye. And I've got, okay, there's a tiny little piece of black itty bitty little piece of black. And all you need is an itty bitty little piece. I mean, really itty bitty little piece. So let's get our glue going here. I, I usually with animals, I really like, or even flowers, you know, as you start with the center, you start with the eye of the animal or the eye of the flower. And this is gonna get surrounded by the red so even though it's kind of a strange shape right now, it's going to get surrounded 
by the red. So that works really well. And I've got a little beak here. So let's see what size beak. I kind of get an idea how much yarn I want to cut off. And then you can also do, like in the case of this beak, I'm going to go ahead and pinch pinch that yarn so I get a little bit more of a, a pointy shape. And place it on there. And you don't want to push down too much because you don't want the top of the yarn to get any glue on it. And that's, that's just simply because this, you've got that nice texture. You want to keep that texture going and keep it soft without uh, getting it. Once you, once you get the glue on there, it just gets this hard crust. Now this is where it gets interesting is you want to work your way around. And I usually just draw with the glue. One section at a time. I draw with the glue. And let's see, how shall I do this? I think... I'm going to let the yarn shape the eye. And we're not trying to be, you know, too realistic. This is where the really sharp pointy scissors come in because they can get in there very very close and then you push your ends down so that they are in contact. You don't want any ends sticking up and you just kind of keep nudging because it takes a while for the glue to dry so you have a chance to keep nudging things around really nice when you're doing um, a, an animal or even a flower, but an animal especially, you want to be able to keep nudging things to get them where where you want them to be. Okay, so then I kind of eyeball, get a sense of how big I want the wattles to be. And I want two of those. Again, kind of give it a little, a little pinch. That's my stick. Sometimes you just change things on the fly. And everything's going to get anchored more when we put the green around it. But meanwhile, yeah, I think that's fine. That's a little different than my first one. Every one should be a little different, right? All right, so we've got that. Now I was going to make a decision. I wanted to, I made this all the same color. Well, I've seen a lot of bantam roosters and the variety in their coloring is wonderful. So I'm going to do something a little different since that was my first experiment. I think what I'm going to do
And that's what's nice here too, is you know, like the way I cut it and everything is like, okay, if I cut it a little short or a little long, you can either um, move these things around if it's a little short or cut it a little shorter if it's a little long. This is just you getting used to playing. This is what this is. This is, we're playing with yarn. It's really fun. And if you don't, if you don't use yarn for anything, I bet you know somebody who does. And that's, that's when you can say, hey, can I have your scraps? You might get them involved with your yarn painting as well. pushing that in there so that it everything gets hidden. Now we're getting kind of wide here so I'm going to start this one low. And all right. There's the neck feathers. Other advantage of having the glue takes time to dry is that it gives you time to move things around if need if needed. Okay. So I think I'll do you can add a little glue. So here's another thing that uh, to know is that you can have these uh, multicolored balls of of yarn, and you don't need to use them as multicolors because that's what I do is I snip off the different colors and I just fill up a little bag with all the little snipped off colors. And a lot of what's nice about these multicolored ones is so like there's two, three different blues, really handy. Because you really, you know, a little bit of variety in there. So, let's see. Got that little pile there. Ah. So, let's see. I'll start with this area. Okay. I'll use this uh, dark blue to describe the wing. Got the neck out there. And so I have a lighter blue. It doesn't have to be hugely different. Differentiate that back leg. All 
All right. Get ready for the tail. Oh, nice long piece of the dark blue. Oh. Now I decided, I decided on this one that the legs were, were, there wasn't enough contrast between the ground. Now I'm going to change the ground for this one and I'm going to change the leg colors. Now this is a natural color, closer to a natural color. And you can see how, get, now that I did this one, I wanted to have a little more variety in this one. So you can see what uh, the, the difference between these two. So it's just a different look. They're all good. So I'm going to go ahead and make the legs black on this one. Just so they stand out from the back, the, the ground background. And I like to get the spurs in there because roosters have spurs. Yep. Just know my nature's whole aspects. You don't want to make perfect toes, don't worry about it. And when you put this around them, it'll make everything look a little bit better. So, yeah, just we're getting a little feel for it is all. Sometimes you can do a little trimming after the glue dries too. But meanwhile, we just kind of have to leave that alone so that the glue can start to dry. And we will move on. So I've got this. Do the barn. Now I could do a red barn. I could, but I'm not gonna do a red barn because I don't want the red to conflict with our our rooster colors. I want him to stand out. So I'm making the background kind of on the dull side. So I, I want the rooster to stand out, not the not the background. And this is very straightforward good size ball of this one. All right. To get that idea of wood, I'm just going for straight lines. And you can trim off edges later, so don't feel like you've got to be precise right now. The important thing actually, you know what's nice is, you know, it's like a cottage cheese container. You put it underneath. It gives it just a little bit of an elevation, which is nice for being able to snip those ends without snipping your table covering. And this is just one of those, you know, dollar type stores. It's great for protecting your tabletop. And you don't care how messy it gets. Right? I gotta remember the cameras there in order to not miss this. Not block your view. Sometimes I have to though. Alright, tucking those ends. Thank you. 
disciplina. Now, I don't like to put, like, fill this all in. I mean, I could, but uh, what happens is that you, you're more likely to drag yarn into the glue. So you want to kind of work in smaller areas. Now, this is where you can start to really have some fun because you want to, you want to zigzag it around. You want to have, make it look, oh, I don't know, textural. And then you can go up and down and over. And just keep wiggling it around, you know, fill it in, keeps coaxing it into place. Make it as tight as you can. See, it looks more like leaves and things going on. You want to keep that, make it kind of organic. It just takes a little coaxing. And here's a tip, if you get to a point where you really can't turn back on itself, just go ahead and snip it off. And get it started again. A great place to get it started again are in these really pointy areas. another thing that is neat is that this is where you can define beak a little more. You know, kind of pointy it up a little bit. You can also spiral these, you know. You can also spiral it around. No rules here. This is just, uh, this is play. This is all play. Kids love to do this. had some neighborhood kids come over and of course they've got these fresh imaginations and they do some amazing things. You gotta do a lot of uh, nudging and coming back to things so that when the glue sets you have a chance to Make some changes. Do 
keep your mechanic coming. That's all that matters. You are ready for I'm still listening here. Ah! Alright. You might have that in room. It's the only thing, I'm keep it up because otherwise I get caught on something. There we go. Alright. Now we're ready to put some dirt. Now the thing about the yarn is that because of its texture, it adds this, it adds an element of line. I mean, you've got the, you've got lines. So the vertical lines, you know, that gives you that sense or that feeling of texture of the barn. Well, on the ground, we want the ground to feel level, right? We want it to feel level, like the, the rooster is standing on level ground. So we want to make sure that our yarn stays horizontal, right? So while I could do like a little circle or something in that empty space, I'm doing the horizontals because I want to have that feeling that the rooster is standing on level ground. And again, I'm going to be a little casual out here so I have some yarn to play with in case I cut it too short or... We also want the background to be simple. We don't want the background to be too complicated. You know, because remember what happened, uh, what happened on this one is this became... I, I liked this textural yarn, but it became complicated visually and was conflicting with the shape of the bird. So I wanted to go with something simple for this one. Now, when the next time I do it, I might do something completely different, find some happy medium. But I'm also, you know, I'm playing around with the yarn I have. This is just the yarn I have. And uh, I didn't go out and buy anything. I just, you know, this is what I have. So, that makes it, uh, I can make it a challenge. You might think of it that way. It's like, well, and of course, you could go get a palette, <laughs> like a colored palette, like you would with watercolors or oil paint. You could go out and get yourself a palette of yarn colors. And of course, the, uh, the innovators of yarn painting are the, the Huichol and the Tepehuano native peoples of northern Mexico, mostly northern Mexico, and they don't earn very much for their yarn paintings. Of course, their cost of living is a lot lower than mine, <laughs> quite a bit lower, um, but they, um, yeah, people go down there and they can buy those yarn paintings for a song. I've seen them on the, the shops for Oh, I don't know, 25 to maybe 50, oops, a little, I had a toe come off, I'll have to put a toe back on, See, lost the toe, it's all right, don't pull any black yarn, we'll get another toe back on there, so, yeah, I, I can't, work for two or five dollars an hour. I'd rather give them more anyway. I got to see one in person one time. Wow, it's amazing. 
And of course, they're using their traditional symbology. I'm just having fun with the concept of working with yarn and um, just creating my own designs, which is the right way to think about it. Okay. Got Tofi in there. Spans there. Sometimes I like to come back from the other direction. What do you do with these guys when you're done, huh? Couple of things. You can get the little bits off later. So there's a couple of things you can do. One is putting this in a shadow box, okay? So you could put this in a shadow box and so there's uh, two things you could do, well, three, really. You could put this in a shadow box, or you could, you might be able to find a frame for it where it can just sit down in it. But there's uh, another thing that I think I'll do with this one, just to, just to show you. I think I've got some, yeah. All right. Here's, here is one way you can do it. These are can be framed, or you can just put them in a shelf. They can just be a, a shelf sitter. So, 
with this one, I think what I'll do, get that blue coming out, is I'm going to give this one a border. And that will hide the edges. So let's start there. That will hide the edges. And this might take a, a little more nudging, but it's a nice look. You see what that's doing? Isn't that nice? And you can still put it in a shadow box, or you could just have it sit on a shelf as is. And you could also use, there are some of those, um, getting kind of gooky here. There's those command um, wall hangers. So you could put one of those on the back of this and another one on a wall and have it hang as is. So that would be a possibility. If you're going to put it in a room that's, uh, I mean, that would work fine in, in uh, like a bedroom or something like that. But if you were going to have this in, say you have a farmhouse, kind of kitchen and you like this for a farmhouse kind of look and that's specifically for this rooster but uh, if you had a farmhouse look you would want to put it in a shadow box because you don't want steam or moisture in the environment where this is because if you have steam or moisture I mean this when the glue dries it, it's really set but on the other hand um, it isn't waterproof, and it would probably, uh, the glue would get less effective over time if it was in a damp environment. You'll have to do some nudging on some of these areas. So let me, ooh, i got to wipe off the glue tip here. It's getting all messy with all those little, little fragments. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, turn the corner. And we'll do a little, we'll do a little nudging. We'll have to come back and nudge some more. And you want to kind of keep an eye on it as the glue is drying and see if there's any place you might want to nudge it a little more. <laughs> I mean, I just, every one of these is a new experience. Every one of these is a little bit different, a little bit different experience. And of course, every one of these that you might do, you're going to get some other ideas. Well, I think we're right. We're right at the end here. This, um, I think, because I did all that preliminary work, this went pretty fast. And yeah, I sped up a little bit of it. But uh, you got to watch quite a bit of it in real time. But I already had all the yarn out. I'd already figured out what colors that things were going to be. Okay, let's get this into your view. Okay, there it is. There is uh, a yarn painting from start to finish. And I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you'll try it, you know, if you so inclined, get together with some friends and just, you know, it's just plain fun. So I hope you'll give this a try and uh, join me in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.